officially operate the ELD as complimentary. Of course, if you have any additional questions or concerns, the key members of the operations staff as well as the entire safety training department will be here to assist you. Our next course will be logging on to the ELD Net device. <laughs> Yeah. This course will take the driver through logging into the PeopleNet EOD tablet. Logging into the PeopleNet EOD device, you will have to enter your driver ID. You also have to enter a password. This will also be your driver ID. Then you'll select sign in. This process is verifying your logs. It lets you know if there's anything that needs the driver's attention in your review log section. You can select OK to continue. Now you'll have to select the status initially logging into the EOD. It's like status. This will bring you up to us where duty status is available for the ELD driver. Today for training, we are going to log in underneath off duty. It will verify and confirm your truck number. After verifying this, like OK to continue. Now it will prompt you to enter in a shipment ID. This will be your CFI load number. If you have none, do not enter anything. Then we can select add to add that underneath current shipments. Once we've done that, we'll select next to continue. Now it will take you back to the CFI home screen. Go back into the ELD main screen. We'll select ELD driver log. Now we have successfully logged into the PeopleNet ELD device. Now we'll log two people into the ELD device. We'll select plus driver. Now we'll have to enter a driver ID. The password also be the driver ID. So once your log has been verified, it'll let you know if there's anything that needs the driver's attention. If you read this, you can select OK to continue. Now we'll have to choose a status for a second person I'm always going to be no ID. We'll select status. This will ask you, are you a primary driver or a co-driver? Now we're going to select co-driver for training purposes today. Now it'll give us a list of duty statuses that we can log in with. Today for training, we're going to select Street Work. It will give you the option, are you going to sleep or birth break, or just a standard sleep or birth period? You can either select break as it applies to your status that you're doing, or you can just skip to continue. Now we'll bring up your shipment information. As you notice underneath current shipments, it will have the number from the previous driver logged into the DOD. So we can select next to continue. Now we'll take us back to the CFI home screen. Go back into our EOD main screen, we'll select EOD driver logs. Now we have two people logged into the EOD device. The top person is the active driver on the EOD. Down below, it will have the second person logged into the EOD. Up left corner, it will show you their current duty status. It will also have their employee number in the lower right hand corner. To switch drivers, all we have to do is simply touch on a lower person and it will invert those drivers. The person on top is always the active primary driver. When logging into the PeopleNet EOD, your driver ID will also be your login password as well. If your employee number starts with a letter, that must be capitalized to log into the ELD. Our next course will take us through ELD main screen overview and a bit. During this course, we'll discuss the ELD main screen and the available duty statuses. This is a new ELD main screen. This screen will be available when the vehicle is stopped. You'll still have your safe driving screen while you're driving down the road. So we'll go over the EOD main screen, starting with status. In the lower left hand corner, we'll select status. We have drive, that is the driving status. We also have on duty, this is on duty non driving. When selecting this status, it will prompt an annotation box. It will have fueling, loading, unloading, and inspections for the driver to choose from, depending on what function they are doing. Today, we're going to hit skip for training purposes. <coughs> Go back into our duty statuses that are available. We'll have sleeper birth. We have on duty yard moves. Yard moves are special driving categories that are allowed by the SMCSA to aid in preserving the 11 hour driving limit and cannot be used on public roadways. They are described as being limited to restricted private property, which makes the movement of the vehicle on duty not driving. 
We have off-duty PC. We have off-duty status available. Then we have off-sign-out, which we will discuss in course later in this segment. Next we'll have the options, the options button. It'll allow you to go into yeah. view your logs, enter into roadside inspection mode, or if there's any unidentified driving, it will show up in the options menu. We have plus driver. This is where another person can log into the EOD device. We have shipments. This is where a driver will go to put in their CFI load number. We have trailers. Trailers is where you'll go to keep your current trailer at your point updated for that day. We have logs. This is where you can go to look at your log grid, your details, your events, and also look at the driver recap. In the top right corner, we have rest break. Rest break is anything off duty. This can be used for a 30 minute DOT break required or anything driver wants to level off duty, they have the option to enter into a rest break. In the center of your screen, you will see a clock. Each day when initially coming on duty, this will start out at eight hours. That's how long we have until the required DOT 30 minute break. At eight hours, this will be green. When there's less than three hours, the green will turn to yellow. With one hour or less, this will turn to red. Off to the right of the clock, you will see a U.S. flag. This is where you can go choose your U.S. Canada hours of service. When entering into Canada, you can now switch over to Canada's hours of service. Today for training, we're going on the United States hours of service. On the top left of the screen, this is the driver that is active on the EOD. It will have the current duty status. When it says time gained that after the driver is in a rest break, this will update them on when they gain time to drive again. Keep in mind, drivers, a 30-minute break, I advise taking an extra one minute, a 31-minute break, because this keeps track of the minutes, not down to the seconds, and violations can be charged down to the second. Underneath there, you will see a drop-down arrow. This a driver can select and it'll bring up a menu. This is where the driver can go to look at their 11, their 14, and their 70 hours that is available. Our next course will be covering shipment information. <laughs> During this course, we'll add shipment numbers and also add trailer numbers. To add our shipment information in, we'll start at the ELD main screen, we'll select shipments. Underneath add shipments, we'll enter in our new shipment ID, then we'll select add. Now we have added our shipment number underneath current shipments. To remove that number, underneath current shipments, we'll select that number we wish to remove. Then the remove option will light up. We'll now select the remove option. We have now entered and removed shipment IDs. Now we're going to add our trailer number. This is very similar to adding the shipment information and removing the shipment information. We'll start at our ELD main screen, we'll select trailers. Underneath add trailers, we'll enter our current trailer number. Then select add. Now you'll see a trailer listed underneath current trailers. In order to remove that, we'll touch that trailer number. Then remove option will light up. We'll select remove. You have now completed adding and removing trailer numbers. The shipment and the trailer icons will not be available if the driver is in rest break or in the sleeper berth status. These are work functions and you must be on duty, not driving, or on driver for these functions to be available. Our next course will be covering how to review and certify logs, making annotations, viewing driver's recap hours, and making edits to the driver's log. <laughs> During this course, we'll cover reviewing and certifying our logs and adding annotations to our logs. With ELD, annotations means remarks. From our ELD main screen, we'll select logs. This will take us to our ELD grid screen. Here you will see your grid, details, events, add or forgotten duty status, and certify your driver's daily log. There's a safety feature that's built into the DLD when you're certifying your daily log. It requires you to enter your password. This will be your driver ID. Once you enter your driver ID, you will select the green. Now you notice that the certified option at the bottom of the screen is no longer.
longer there. This means that driver's log is certified for that day. To view the driver recap hours, it will require starting at the OB main screen. Underneath time gain it, you will see an arrow. Select this arrow and it will bring up a drop down menu. On this menu, you will see your 11, your 14, how long till your required DOT 30 minute break. And also, it will show your cycle duty. This is your stepping out or what is available. To collapse this, just touch anywhere on this menu and it will collapse. To look at the rest of your 8 day recap, we'll select logs in the lower right hand corner. This will bring up your log grid. Notice at the top left, you'll see a back arrow and dates. You will have to back arrow for each date. It will take you back to the eighth day. You will have to add up your driving time and your on-duty not driving time to get your recap for that day. This is how you will do your recap hours. To add an annotation to your log, it will require starting a DOD main screen. You will select logs. This will take you to your DOD grid screen. You will now select events. You can scroll down through to find the event you wish to put an annotation in for or a remark. Once you find that event, touch it to highlight it, then the annotate box will appear at the lower part of your screen. You can now select annotate and it will prompt an annotation box for you to put in your annotation. For training purposes, we'll put in test. Now we can select submit to add that remark to our log. You must select done on the lower left hand side to complete this task. Now you have added an annotation to your driver log. You must go back and certify that log. You will have to enter in your password. This will be your driver ID. Once that log is certified, the option of certify will no longer be available at the bottom of the screen. We have now added an annotation to our log. Making an edit to your daily log will require starting at the EOD main screen. You will select logs in the lower right hand corner. This will take you to the EOD grid. From here, you will select events. This will bring up a list of all your duty status events. Here, you can scroll and find the event you wish to edit. Once you find that event, touch it to highlight it. An edit option at the lower part of your screen will appear. Then you can select edit. This will take you to the editing status screen. Here you can choose your duty status, the start time, and your location. For training, we are going to edit on duty. You must scroll down where it says reason for change, annotation box will appear. You must put a reason why you're making this edit. Once you put your annotation in, you will hit submit. To complete this task, you must hit save in the lower right hand corner. Once saved, it will take you back to your event. Here you must certify that log for making that change. Once again, enter your password in. This will be your driver ID. Select agree. Once that log is certified, the option to certify the lower part of your screen is no longer there. You have completed the log edit. To accept log proposals, we'll start at the ELD main screen. We will use our option button function. As you notice, the top left corner is orange. This is learning the driver something needs their attention. From here, we can see review logs is lit up. So we'll go ahead and select review logs. Here we can bring up our events. We can use our data at the back left to scroll through each day and look at our log events to see if there's a proposal. You will notice the log proposal because it will stand out in red. As we scroll through our events, we notice here's a red event. So we need to click on this to highlight it. Once you have highlighted the event, you will select accept. You must hit done to complete this task. Now you have accepted log proposal. You must recertify that daily log. We'll select certify. Here you will enter in your password. This will be your driver ID. Then select agree. Now you have accepted the log proposal. This is the PFM portal. This is where a driver can go to certify their logs. Anytime that a driver is off for greater than eight days, they must go to the PFM portal to certify their daily logs. <coughs> Here you will have put in an organization ID. That will be 4677. User ID, this will be your driver ID. 
password that's also be your driver ID. Then you will select sign in. At this screen here, it'll bring up options for you. You can see where it says uncertified log. We will certify our log now by selecting uncertified log. This will list the dates of logs that are uncertified on the ELD. For training today, we will certify 729 of 2019. So you'll select 729. This will bring up your grid just as you see it on your ELD tablet. Here in the upper left hand part of your log, you can see certified. So you need to select certified. This will ask you, do you agree that you are certifying logs for a 24 hour period or accurate or true? You need to select agree. You now have certified your logs for that time period. As you can see down below, your time zone, 24 hour starting time, and it says certified by and the date. This will be the driver's name to certify that one. You have now completed. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about that since he's in there. And I can it. I was using some original ID to get into these things, but I found out I can get into it without having to do that. Now, when you bring up this this uh, PFM portal type deal, I need to change my display real quick here in just a second. When you bring it up, you'll notice pfmlogin.com. Once you get to it, you'll have this screen right here. Mine says 4705. What number did he say to put in? 4677. 4677. You keep that number because that's what you're going to use. I'm going to use this number because it is a, a portal type deal. Uh, I'll walk out by now. Once you get to this screen, you're going to put in the 4677, however, I'm putting in the 4705. Then you're going to put in your user ID, your user ID again. Once you get to it, you'll sign in. You guys need this page. You're not going to be able to do it today until your ID becomes active. But once you get into it, let's see it tomorrow. Go ahead and get in here because guess what? The first thing that's up here is change my status. I want everybody, because you don't have the last nine days, or last eight days with you, after you'll, you're only going to have the last eight days, tomorrow isn't going to count on anything. So what you're going to do is come in here, change your status to off duty. And then you're going to come down here and select city and state, put in the city and put the state in, Joplin, Mo. So that way, everything you do up until the time you get onto your truck, is there. Now those of you that may have to go after a truck, I don't know, we'll find out hopefully later today. Um, usually this would give me an off-duty status, but I don't know why it's not at this current time. It says open off. Oh, somebody's already into it. But anyway, you'll change your status to off-duty. That way when you get to your truck, it's already there. Those of you that travel, you're going to have to go in and change your stu duty status to on duty during your travel time to go get your vehicle. It has to be on duty. If you look at the regulation, it says any time traveling to get your vehicle has to be shown as on duty time. So show that time is on duty to get your vehicle. Now, when he's talking about uncertified logs, guys, at least go in here once a week and check on this. Click on this part right here. All of these each one of them, the 200 and some of it, it shows in here, 262, that's 262 violations that you can get cited for. Now, normally you may have one or two. Go in and certify your logs. Here's the deal. If you certified yesterday at the end of your shift, you go to bed, you go ahead and you look at everything, it all looks good, and I hit certify. The next morning when you get up, it's still going to show that you didn't certify for yesterday because there's a portion of yesterday up till midnight that didn't certify yet. So you're gonna have to go back to that day again and certify. The best thing to do is wait until you wake up the next day and go, okay, I'm getting ready. Let me go back to yesterday and certify everything for yesterday. It's done, it's over. Certify everything when you get up. So that way all previous stuff is certified. 
Now, what she was talking about yesterday, about everybody going out and going back in, I, to me, that's a pain in the ass type deal. But if you're going to log off, just log out of the system for a moment and log back in. But if you're going to log out, you might as well restart the device and let it refresh everything, kind of like your restart cell phone. Mine does the same thing. Every seven days it says redo it. But if I'm going to do it, I might as well just restart the whole thing. Just make sure you have time. If you don't have time that day to go ahead and do it, fine, wait until you stop for the night, then go ahead and sign out, sign back into it, and let it refresh. And then, then the following morning, go ahead and do a uh, certify for yesterday. That way you don't have those violations. How do you start? Okay, you you just hit this button right here, and it'll pop up that. So, I showed you this stuff because it is very important that you use this, especially if you're taking more time off at home, or maybe something's in there that you need to look at. You can also go in here and edit your logs. You can go in here and do all sorts of things. Let's say this device is down and you're needing some logs. You can go in here, if you've got a printer in your truck, you can print your logs out for yourself. So that way you have your logs available. Just don't print more than the last seven days. Today's the eighth day. You started on that in your log. Because if you do that, DOT can look at anything you give to them. They can cite you for it. How far back do you think DOT, if they came in here, can go back and cite you for every violation that you've had? Six months. Six months. Six months. Is six months. After six months, they, we get rid of them. That system's purged. But they can look at everything you've done the last six months. If you've been speeding, they can cite you. If you've got PC and it's a false deal, they can cite you. And I've seen them do it. The Fed that was in doing the audit with me, he talked about a trucking carrier he went into that he ended up charging that carrier $25,000 the first time, $75,000 the second time, and when he came back in again, they said, how much are you going to charge us this time? He said, I'm not. He just closed the doors. So I showed you guys this for an important reason because this is very important to you guys. And we'll go ahead and get out of it and the rest of the video. <laughs> During this course, we will learn about the option button function and roadside inspection. On the DLD main screen, you will see an option function. Notice the top left corner of this is orange. This is letting you know if there's something that needs the driver's attention. We'll select options. It'll pop up a sidebar menu for us. We'll notice here beside review logs that shows the orange list and log flow. This is visually alerting the driver that logs need to be reviewed. Also, if there's any unidentified driving, it will also show in this menu. Drivers can also, upon a roadside inspection, just scroll down through this menu and find their option to enter into a roadside inspection mode. When we're set for a roadside inspection by its law enforcement, we'll select roadside inspections from the option menu. This will take us to our ELD grid. Here, the officer can look at our details, our events, and you can transfer your logs to the officer by selecting data file transfer. This will pop up a box to give you choices of email, a web service, or we do have the capability of using a USB to transfer our logs for that officer. Each officer will have their method of transferring the log. Follow the officer's <coughs> instructions. This will prompt up a box to enter in a file comment. Each officer will have their unique file number that they will give you to enter in this section. Once you have completed, enter this number in, then you will select done on the lower right. Then it will let you know that the loans have been received by the officer. Once the files have been transferred and your roadside inspection is completed, you'll have to return to the ELD home screen. By selecting home, there is a safety feature built in that will require a driver to enter in their password. This will also be the driver ID. This is so law officials cannot go any farther than hours of service linking on the tablet. Once you enter in your password, ID, this will take you back to the LD main screen. You have now just completed a roadside inspection. Our next video will come. During this course, we'll take you through the steps of using the EOD user guide. 
from the CFI home screen, there is a built-in EOD user guide in every tablet. This user guide will take you through step-by-step -step of operating the EOD from logging in to logging out. Also in this EOD user guide is a malfunction guide. This is required by DOT to have in your possession at all times. It is on page 26 of the user guide. So if you have any questions of a malfunction, revert to this guide. It has troubleshooting tips in there for you as well. Some malfunctions will clear themselves in a matter of minutes, and some may require 24 hours or even coming into the shop for repair. So very important upon a malfunction to follow all the company policy and procedures and reflect to that guide to know what the malfunction is and how to clear that malfunction out of the system. Part of the FMCSA says the driver can only run on paper logs for eight days. Our goal is to have the unit in Dublin and have it fixed with seven days or less. So drivers must notify the company within 24 hours of that malfunction. Our next video will be a general overview of <laughs> Use that user guide when you can. Read through it, I'm sure it'll help you out tremendously out there on the road. Again, it's not gonna work real super fast because it ain't got a lot of memory to support it. During this video, we'll do a general overview of the ELD. Drivers, keep in mind when you're making your log edits, driving statuses cannot be changed or edited. In order to make an edit, that log must be certified prior to making the edit. Then after you complete that edit, you must go back and recertify that log. Drivers, you must certify your log for every 24 hours. This is the federal mandate. During roadside inspections, keep in mind, drivers, there are some key information and things that you must have with you in your possession. You must have an operating instruction card to show to the DOT officer. You must have a malfunction guide as well. The malfunction guide is built into the EOD user guide on page 26 of that. And you must have at least eight days of blank CFI logbook sheets with you, adding annotations to your log. Make for sure if we put notes into our log, ELD annotation means adding a remark. A note can go a long way to eliminate guesswork amongst log officials and also law officials during the roadside enforcement. Make sure that your load and trailer numbers are updated and correct. They are current to the correct load that you have and the trailer that you are pulling. All ELD tablets have a built-in user guide. This guide is great to reflect back on, on how the operation of the ELD works, or we'll take you from the logging in process, all the way through the logging out process. Drivers, if there is a malfunction of the device, there will be a note prompt on the screen that says what the malfunction is, and it will let you know to revert to paper log. At this time, you must notify the company within 24 hours of the malfunction. You need to go back to the malfunction guide and see what the malfunction is and what the clearing processes are for. So malfunctions can clear themselves in a matter of minutes. Some may require you coming to Dolphin to get the device service. Upon a malfunction, you must notify the company within 24 hours. You can send a free form message, Form 55, stating running on paper logs need the previous eight days log. You can send a DBIR, that will be Form 35. Running on paper logs need the previous eight days log. You also can email elogshelp at cfidrive.com from your smartphone or tablet or laptop, stating running on paper logs in the previous eight days log. From the time that the malfunction starts, you must revert to paper logs at that period of time. In the remarks section, note on your log that malfunction reverting to paper logs. You must have the previous eight days logs with you. You must contact CFI with the above methods and have them supply you with your previous eight days log. The importance of logging out your tablet when you're not in control of your truck. Drivers, when you're at the shop, make for sure that you log out so the shop has to log into your unit. With ELD, all miles of that truck has to be accounted for. If you're on home time, good practice, log out. If in doubt someone else might drive your truck, please log out. Anytime you're here dropping and you're getting worked into your truck, please log out of the device because it's presumed whoever logged into the device last has done that driving time. And driving status cannot be edited by log officials or by the driver. So this could really impact your hours, it could impact your pay, and it also could hurt your productivity. If you have any additional questions or concerns, feel free to reach out to your fleet supervisor or the safety training department. And thank you for watching this ELD training program and have a safe and wonderful day. All right, see how much of that stuff I
haven't been able to cover yet. Now, what I'd like to do tomorrow, or this evening, or any other, is to get you guys in and 